Okay, y'all, so let's continue talking about scaling spine link fabrics by talking about the butterfly fabric. The butterfly fabric is very, very similar to a clove fabric. Uh, just for a little bit of review, we will go back over and look at the butterfly fabric again. A butterfly fabric look is wired like this. Now remember, this is my spine, and these are my top of rack switches. And these also are top of rack switches. This is confusing to some people that I draw the, top, draw the top of rack switches both at the top and the bottom of the network diagram. But it's actually easier to see the fabric this way. You can actually see the interconnections here, the way that the fabric is laid out here, etc., etc. Now, it's important to remember a couple of things. First, the way a butterfly fabric is built is I have these pods. And we're going to talk a bit more about pods in just a second and how important this is to the concept of the ability to scale and manage these kinds of networks or this topology. Then you have these fabrics. Now, technically, all the devices in the blue with blue links on them are part of the blue fabric. Now, what we would normally say is these are my fab routers or my fabric routers and these are my spines, and then these are my leaves, or my top of racks. That's the way I would normally call these five stages of these um, devices in a butterfly fabric. Now, it's interesting because when I look at a clove fabric, what is it that limits the number of devices that I have in my top of rack switches that I have? It's actually the number of ports on each one of these devices. And what is it that limits the number of spine switches I can have? It's the number of up ports or the two fabric ports that I can have on my top of rack switches, right? So that's kind of my limiter in a spine and leaf or in a, in a clove fabric. In a butterfly, it's very, very similar. The number of uh, pods that I can have is limited by the number of ports in a single fabric up here, like in this case, I'm showing fabrics of two routers. So the number of ports between these two routers, so I can bind these two, and that gives me the number of leaves that I can get to, or the number of pods I can get to, essentially. It's not really the number of pods, it's the number of pods divided by the number of the spine switches, the number of these devices. Then to find the number of pods, you divide that by the width of your pod. Um, and normally your pod in a butterfly is going to be exactly half of the number of ports that you have on these devices. So if these are 32 port devices, you're going to have a 16 wide pod. And if these are 64 port devices, you're going to have a 32 wide pod. And you're always going to build your pods to the same size. So that's, that's one of the things that you want to kind of do. Now you can do other things with a butterfly. You can build smaller pods and use multiple connections down in these areas. I just find it easier math-wise to just build my pods out to whatever the size is that I can. And then adjust the number of fabrics and the number of devices in each one of these fabrics to get to the scale I want to get to. So let's look at what that looks like. So this kind of chart or pair of charts gives you a sense of some of the scale sizes that you can get to. Now everything in this chart is built with 32 by 100, um, which are one RU boxes. And everything in this chart is built with 64 by 100, which are two RU boxes, right? So that kind of gives you a sense of the two different sizes of scale or scopes of scaling that you're talking about, right? So with a 32 by 100 box, if I were to run, say, eight fabrics, each fabric has 16 switches, and I have 16 pods, I have 4,096 by 100 ports. And you can see I can go down to all my pod widths are 16 because I'm using 32 by 100 devices in this particular table. So like I said, I can actually scale the fabric up and down by managing the number of fabrics and the number of switches in each fabric rather than changing the size of my pod. This allows me to scale out. If I actually make my pod smaller, then as I increase the number of switches in my fabric, then I actually cannot continue to scale the fabric. I get stuck at this point where I've maxed out the number of ports out of the pod into the spine layer, into the fabric layer, and this causes me to not be able to scale the fabric any longer. So I often find it much more useful to build my pod width to exactly half the size of the number of ports. So 
this is going to give you a sense. Uh, this is a maxed out 32, 8 fabric, 16 switches per fabric, which gives me 16 pods, which gives with a pod width of 16 gives me 4096 by 100. Now, of course, I can take this, do a 4x optical on it. And what do I get? I get uh, 16K or thereabouts, uh, whatever that number is, of 25 gig ports or 10 gig ports, depending on how I light things out. And these are all, by the way, everything in all of these charts is one to one oversubscription. And all of these workloads are by 100. So you can see here that what I'm doing here is if I have a 32, I can run eight fabrics with four switches per fabric, which gives me four pods, which gives me which gives me 1024 by 100. You'll notice that my switch fabric and my, the switches per fabric in my pod are what I'm scaling up. So as I add more pods, I just add more switches per fabric. And the maximum size of my butterfly fabric is kind of regulated by the number of fabrics I start with. It's really physical space as well. And we'll talk about that in just a second. But it's kind of both. Okay, so if I move down here to my 64 by 100, you'll start seeing some really, really huge sizes in these fabrics. So if I go to 16 fabrics, 4 switches per fabric, 4 pods, so I, so I have 4 switches per fabric and 4 pods, I have 4096 by um, 100 gig workloads. Now this gives me matches over here. Now of course I can go to this 32 by 100. I can go up to 16 with 32 pods. And you'll notice I can actually double the number of pods here. And I will be able to get to 8192 and that's going to match down here. So my biggest 32 by 100 butterfly fabric is going to be mid-scale or the smallest of the upper tier of 64 by 100 switches. You'll often see this kind of parallel or overlapping scale sizes uh, when you look at spine and leaf fabric scaling numbers. Now, what's interesting is, is when I get down here to these larger ones, uh, I get down to the 64 by 100 and I'm running 32 fabrics, 16 switches per fabric, 32 pods, 32 by one, uh, 32 pod width, I can build 32,768, and this is by 100. So again, I can take this, I can do X4 using optical, and I can come out with 120,000 by 25 gig um, workload facing ports. There aren't many data center fabrics in the world that need to be that large. So clearly you can get away without using chassis boxes in your spine and leaf and build a single skew data center fabric where every device is identical to every other device in terms of RU units and software runs and all of that kind of stuff. You can actually clearly do that using this butterfly style fabric. Uh, you can get to these huge scale numbers. Now the way that you scale this out is the same way that you would scale out um, a clove fabric, right? You have a set of racks that represent your fabrics. So this might be your blue fabric, this might be your red fabric, this might be your green fabric, just name them whatever you want to. You know, you can name them after robots in some sci-fi movie if you want to, it doesn't really matter. But uh, a lot of people use colors, but you kind of run out of colors. I mean, if you're gonna run a 64 fab or a 32 fabric, a uh, butterfly fabric, and you have 32 fabrics, well, 32 colors kind of hard. You gotta go under chartreuse and all these other weird colors that nobody really wants to deal with. So quite often people will name them something else uh, just to be a little more creative. But anyway, so you'll notice that if I have four devices up here in my fabrics that I have four pods. And then I do the same thing here. I have eight devices and I have eight pods. And if I go to 16 or yeah, um, I'm showing 12 devices or whatever it is here. I have 12 pods. So that's an interesting thing, by the way, is that I have these odd numbers on here, like these 12s and 24s. These are a little bit strange to wire because you don't have an even number of switch port connections between each fabric and those fabric devices up there in your fab layer. So those can be a little bit odd to wire. So I usually don't recommend that people mess with those. Just stick with the nice even numbers unless you're simply trying to scale up step by step. Now, an interesting thing is, as you move up the number of devices in each fab, what you must do is you have to rewire things. So right now, pod one has four routers. Each one connects to each of these fabrics. 
and I'm not showing the fourth fabric here because there may be more than four fabrics. I'm just trying to illustrate how this works. So if I go to eight pods, well now I've got to actually take some of the ports that were connected off of pod one into this and move them to these other fabric devices. So the reason that you kind of have to set this space aside for each fabric so that each fabric is contained within one or two racks is so that you have that ability to move the wiring around or the optics around as you scale the fabric up. Um, and I'm not going to do all of the magic here. You can figure it out on paper if you want to of how you actually do that. Now this is a just a wire out of a four pod 32 by 100 and there's 16 fabrics you can count them if you want to here and two switches per fabric so you can kind of see how this lays out now in this case I will have now it's interesting because I will count these right I have 16 two fabric ports on this spine switch and I have 16 down to my top of rack Given that I have 16 and I only have two switches in the fab layer that I'm going to connect to, each of these is actually 8x. So that's how I do my math. I just figure out the number of up ports against the number of devices, or the number of switches in my fab layer. Now, if I were to increase the size of this fab layer to four, now all of a sudden I've got to connect this to four devices. And that's what I was talking about before. You have to remove those optical cables to get around these things, right? So you're actually moving these up. But when you do that, instead of using, so right now I have um, 8x here, 8x here, so that's these, these 16 ports, and I have 8 here and 8 here, so that's these 16 ports. When I dump, jump to 4, now I have these 4 going here, these 4 going here, these 4 going here, and these 4 going here, which clearly leaves me 4 extra ports on each one of these switches, which allows me to connect another 2 pods, or another 4 pods, into this network. So that's how I'm actually rewiring this to allow it to scale out step by step. It's kind of really cool the way that works. Um, so that is something to think about. Now, an interesting point to make here is that when I think through my, my pod layout like this, each of these pods becomes like a module within the network that I can pick up and replace the entire pod at once if I want to. This is really cool because I can run generations in my pods and in my fabrics. So for instance, I can install my first generation pod in here and all of these fabrics. And so all four of them are Gen 1 when I first go ahead and install this. And then I say, you know what, I want to upgrade the software on this thing. I'm not going to push the software to everything in the data center. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to pick a fabric and a pod and I'm going to push the new software version or the new hardware version to just those two. This is called a canary. So this allows me to push this stuff out there to run it either so I can actually move all my workload over to a different pod and then slowly migrate the workload back or put all its workload on that one pod that has the new software hardware hardware in it, and I can play with it and make sure that it works the way I want it to. It's actually in production, so I'm actually moving the stuff around in production, or I can move production traffic to it, but it's on my production uh, fabric. So this gives me a lot of flexibility. And so I can have this one as Gen 1, 1, 1, and 1. And then I can say, well, I'm going to try a new generation. So I, I, I convert half of my fabrics to Gen 2, and one of my pods. I get everything running. Everything runs fine. And then as it runs fine, I move this one to Gen 2. And you know, that kind of worked. So I'll move this one to Gen 2. Now I'll move this one to Gen 2. Now I'll push all my fabs to Generation 2. So this allows me to do this kind of rolling upgrade. As long as I'm using the same physical size box, whether it's a 2RU or a 1RU, with the same port layout, I can actually mess around with things. Now, the key also is I have to use the same speed links because it's very, very difficult to move from like a 40 gig to a 100 gig doing this. What you've got to do, you've got to start with a 100 gig, whatever you think the max size for the fabric is. Now, when you run out of spine space or fabric space and you run out of bandwidth then you just have to forklift the entire fabric and go to the next size that's why it's important to think through what size you actually think it's going to be so that pod and fabric modules can be separated by generation so what you need to do when you're building a pod and fabric module a 
butterfly style fabric is you need to build a strong life cycle on the pod and fabric generations, not on a per device. This goes back to my concept of these devices are not pets. They are cattle. And I want to treat every device as if it's just a piece of commodity, even if it's bought from your favorite vendor. So that's okay. What you just need to do is think about the design differently than you would normally think about. Okay, so that's it for this section. And we'll come back and talk a little bit more about data center fabrics in the next one.